Hello, this is John Fields, and this is my uh, video post on my reflections on the interview with Curtis Bonk and Robin Good uh, about the future of learning. And I thought, what better way to um, to display my post than with a video using technology that uh, Curtis Bonk so has arguing so much for in this interview. So. Um, there are a lot of key points uh, that I thought were interesting throughout this um, throughout this interview, so I'll display a few of those for you. Um, the first off, what uh, what Curtis Bonk feels is that technology uh, right now is the best way to teach, um, and feels that uh, you know if we can use it the right way, that is the best tool. It is the best tool out there, um, as long as we can keep up to date uh, with everything. So. Uh, he also feels that it should be, um, should, we should be very social with it and very entertaining on how we use it. Um, currently, right now, he's creating videos uh, to teach, to teach professors how to teach online, if that makes sense. Um, you know about different topics for online courses and learning and things like that. Uh, and what he feels is is what that gives uh, uh, students through online courses is a social presence, a connection with the professor. Uh, they see a face uh, rather than an audio post uh, or readings uh, online. They get a feel of interaction uh, and a presence there. So, um, one of the things I thought that was very interesting uh, is the fact that he thought <laughs> he thinks Facebook is the best way to go um, or is a good way to go about uh, interacting with students and educating uh, further than uh, inside the walls of a classroom. So he talks about how you know Facebook has games different applications that engage students in everyday life. Uh, he throws out Farmville. Um, I've never played Farmville, but I know a lot of people who do. Uh, and he's saying that how can we take a game like Farmville and make it educational? Um, the only thing I, I object to that is the fact that they're playing a game. They're not really learning. They're, I mean, I mean, they could be learning, but you know what, if they're, if they're playing it from a game, then don't they kind of lose the uh, social presence that he was talking about uh, you know with a teacher teacher to a student uh, if they're just sitting down playing a game the whole time they're not really interacting with the teacher they're just kind of doing it themselves uh, granted they could learn something but the social presence he talks about it's not going to be there um, he also feels that this could engage people throughout uh, well beyond the classroom uh, as they could they could connect with people uh, in the classroom, but out outside, like outside class hours. Uh, but they could also t in touch, get in touch with people throughout the states, even throughout the world, uh, and get their views and uh, their take on the certain type of information and, and education that they're that they're learning. They can they can get their other people's perspective on things. Um, I do agree that it'd probably be a good way to get kids excited about learning, uh, just for the mere fact that it. Uh, uh, it's the new fad. Everybody's on Facebook. Everybody's playing with it. Uh, so if there's an educational way to, to use it, I'm sure you know kids would be attracted to it. Uh, he talks about how people could share ideas, share homework, things of that nature. But he really he really focuses on sharing homework. And to me, um, I think that could be a problem because then you run into the whole aspect of cheating and plagiarism and things of that nature. And you know when they start sharing ideas with other people. Uh, I think it takes away from their actual their actual thinking because if I if I talk to someone about how they think, you know, without me even doing in my own thinking, that might transform. Uh, I might start thinking what they're thinking um, and put it as my own personal sp perspective rather than thinking on my own, asking them, and then putting something together. I don't want my thoughts to be somebody else's thoughts, you know. Um, so those are those are some concerns that I have with that. Um, he also talks about going beyond the four walls uh, of a classroom, that there are so many different ways that we can educate outside of the box of the actual classroom. Um, uh, and he goes back to his book that he talks about, and he shows the cover of it saying how one kid doesn't have to be in the classroom to learn about Einstein, to learn about uh, Oxford or whatever he, t whatever he said as an example, um, when they can go on to a uh, an audio cast or podcast whenever they want and they can listen to it uh, or look up internet or look up things on the internet through ebooks or or things of that nature but but what if 
you know, what if they don't have the luxury to do that? I mean, what if they can't go use a computer whenever they want, look up things whenever they want? They're st they're missing out on what everybody else is. It's too sporadic. Uh, to me, I think kids need structure. I think students need structure. They need to be progressed from grade to grade, uh, grade level to grade level, rather than just let them do it whenever they want. I mean, he talks about, uh, you know, a kid teaching a class online. He's like 10 or six or ten years old I can't remember exactly but uh, you know but wouldn't you want structure um, when when it, with the student from progressing from age to age and then really using what they learned uh, in each grade as they go um, you know I I, I kind of I kind of disagree um, with that yes they can get the information whenever they want but are they really learning and and how are they learning uh, what progress are they actually having um, you know, and he also talks about uh, uh, how we can transform, you know, devices to everyday devices that we use today into into learning tools. And he talks about cell phones, uh, mobile devices, uh, uh, headsets, things of that nature. Um, and this, I actually think, would be a good idea. Um, you know, kids are playing on cell phones all the time. Kids are kids are using uh, other tools. Um, uh, and they all know they're pretty savvy. He says they're pretty savvy with uh, with all the new devices and technology today. Um, so how do we use those things to engage them? How do we take how do we take something that they're very very interested in and make it educational for them? Um, that I I honestly don't know. <laughs> But, uh, but I think that if we could tap into that and, and figure out a way to, to take a, a, a cell phone um, and try to use it educationally, I think, uh, I think it would only benefit. Um, also, it gives kids a can he talks about video conferencing, and it gives a chance to not only students but also professors to kind of sit in other player or sit in other people's shoes, uh, professors' shoes, uh, see their perspective on, on either coursework, um, homework at, for students, uh, coursework for, for professors, things of that nature. Um, and it gives them a chance to also put a face put a face with their question and put a face with the answer that they're given to. Um, he's also talking about pushing internationally. Uh, and he feels that this is technology is the most powerful way to, is, is the most powerful tool uh, and that we should try to focus more on cross-cultural uh, projects and you know that's something that I feel that could be very beneficial as well because you know I might be working on the same thing that a kid in, 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 in China uh, is working on and they might have completely different learning style than I do they may they may have a better way for me to understand it than than what I'm doing now you know but the only way we could uh, come to that is by collaborating and, and understanding um, each other through that, so uh, it gives kids a um, a chance to, to to figure out or talk with other talk with other uh, students throughout the world, uh, and also gives chance to gives kids a chance to make a deeper conne uh, connection and collaboration uh, amongst other students, uh, not necessarily across culture, but it but it can be within the states as well. Uh, they can think about things that they never thought about before. Um, you know, they might have an idea, and that, like we talked about earlier, a kid, a kid in another, uh, in the other class, or in another class, or in the same class, may have a different perspective on something. But as with the collaboration that they could have together, it could it could definitely help them uh, deepen their deepen their critical thinking a little bit further. So, all in all, those are some of the main points that I got from the video, and I felt that were that were important enough um, to be put in this post. So. Um, in conclusion, I, I felt it was a great interview and I, I learned quite a bit from it and I feel that uh, uh, if we can tap into using technology and making it beneficial for students that there's no reason why you know we couldn't benefit from it uh, as teachers as well as students. So uh, that concludes my uh, audio or video post uh, and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks.